one of those classic maps. It's one of those maps where uh, you always can see comebacks because everyone knows this map. If you have played Counter-Strike, you will have played this map. It's just as simple as that. Uh, people usually have uh, the level of game sense on a map like this is a little bit higher. This, game, this map has been in... Uh, every iteration of this game for the longest of times, of course, so people uh, people know all the classics. You'll have to see what happens here, because you would expect that Cloud9 should be able to abuse their individual skill very well on a map like this, and uh, be able to stick to the basics, do the basics really well, and that should be enough. But in reality, Tempo Storm have shown equally they've got a really good skill. The the only, I think, the hugest edge really is Skadoodle. I think that I think Skadoodle versus Shazam is like the biggest edge. Skadonglers. If you, if you make the comparison um, on between the two offers, I think Skadoodle, of course, is going to shine on, shine a lot. Well, I and think... And this is such, as you said, AWP is so important here. That I think edge. it's with players like Freakazoid and Shroud on the team, and nothing if he shows up like he, like he did in map one, then a Cloud9 could be unstoppable just from the Angels. Just from the Angels. All right, so speaking of duels, we're going to have uh, Freakazoid finding two in the long area. So an early advantage. They will leave nothing with 12 HP to watch the flank onto long. So Cloud9 players do not need to worry about that. Just short for now. You can see nothing starting to move over to flank short instead. So we're going to have the uh, three CT players sandwiched in the short area starting to push now. But they can, the Cloud9 players can use these boxes to find themselves the 1v1. Skadoodle going to finally finish off Hades. Shazam looking for a frag, going to find a frag. And he's going to be the only one standing there. There's another frag for him, but he's going to be running out of bullets soon. There's the last bullet for him. He's going to the knife, looking for a knife kill. He's still trying to chase it, and he will find it. Pick up. Oh, if oh. he clutches this. He doesn't have a kit. He can't, he can't win it, but that's some good fun. He will find the uh, consolation frag. No kit, and he will just go down on the sword there. Good effort, though. That knife was pretty awesome. He got the swipe. Yeah, I if he had to clutch that, because there was that one shot that he got off with the Glock whilst the player was still visible and short, uh, that would have been legendary. So he's going to start around on just shy, just shy, Dan, of $4,000. He's a mere 50 away. He's as close as he can be without being. Yeah, the AWP, you can, you can taste the AWP on the next round. Well... I, I don't know if he should buy it up on next round. We'll have to see how things go here for his team. You just reminded me of everybody naming their fade Taste the Rainbow, myself included. But I've changed it now to something else. So Cloud9 are in control of long, and they are in control of short. Tempo Storm are not in control of their destinies in this round, as they only have mere pea shooters to contest. The well, maybe they accept man. their destiny. Destiny of failure, death, desolation. Bludgeoning, blunt objects. Bludgeoning, there's no blunt objects here. There is not a single blunt object. You cannot inflict blunt trauma in this, in this game. I game. suppose... Hey, you can actually. You can, you can hit somebody in the head with a grenade. No, that's not, that's not what, blunt you can, you can force kill, though. You can kill someone with that. Yeah, does it count as blunt force? Absolutely, because you can kill someone with that before it explodes. If they have one HP, <laughs> you can okay, kill them right. with a headshot right, with a James. grenade. Thank yes. you. Good night. Yes. Okay, you win. You win. You got me there. Two zero. Cloud nine gonna pick up round number two pretty easily. And uh, Tempo Storm, you can see the money on them, and uh, they're able to buy, which is uh, pretty awesome for them. And uh, we're gonna see the open on Shazam because he got the knife kill. He even gets head armor actually because he realizes, hey, it's actually it's actually a really smart thing to do because the MP7s are still out, the glills are still out. Tempo have been to ammunition, bought themselves some toys. Quad famas by. We'll see what they can do here. Cloud9 may be in for a surprise. Shazam's orb has not yet been announced. Yeah, that knife frag didn't turn into a clutch, but it turned into an earlier buy uh, for Tempo Storm. Oh, Shazam, that is such a timely flash, but oh, the flick shot comes in. He has to take down at least one or two before they get onto the bomb site here. And he doesn't pick up a single kill just yet. Now he's got a hard engagement, and he cannot get out of there. Gets uh, surrounded. Skidio picks up the kill, and they didn't, he didn't get a single frag with the AWP there, and that is going to hurt massively um, for Tempo Storm. Now, it's also meaning an AWP for Skidio whenever he deems it worthy to pick it up. So this will be cleaned up. Cloud9 look to be having a solid round here. 
Yeah, that was interesting. Shazam ended up being the most advanced person on the site and the only one. Complete isolation, which turned into desolation. I mean, if he picks up two kills there, they definitely should have a strong chance to win the round. But that's the kind of position you're put in if you decide to uh, commit to, to fighting from that, from that spot. And you should, I think, from that they position. They did not the recover orb. the orb. What? I don't know if... Like but it was on the bomb site. I don't know if... Well, they threw a lot of grenades in over there, so maybe we had blasted <laughs> it off the site or something, but... Off the map. For whatever reason, the AWP is gone. Maybe they didn't want Shazam's AWP. It's cursed, James. It is cursed with bad fortune. All right, we have uh, a lot of players here towards A long, of course, the 3-2 setup coming into play, and they're going to get a ding. But will they get the kills? One kill, in fact, Freakazoid goes down, and this is actually not looking super good because they are still in the choke point, which kind of sucks for Cloud9. So the smart thing to do here is to back away, I would say. You can keep Sean Gares there to stop them pushing through the doors and just get easy frags, and that's what they're going to do. Stroud is going to try to help out, provide distraction, but uh, 4v3 with Stanislaw on 3 HP. Stanislaw always makes me think of, uh, the, 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 you know, King Stannis. Makes me think of Coleslaw. So we have a 3 2 scoreline here, and the card line looking to make it a fast 4 2. But they're getting tagged really low at the moment, and Hades has a Galil. This could get messy for Cloud, uh, for cloud 9. Um, Tempo Storm, they don't really have good positions. That's the only real problem for them. Yeah, so this, oh, yeah, this tagging, this tagging on Cloud 9. I was going to say this round should be a formality, but maybe not. Wow. As That's the, the, remaining that was the healthiest players. player as well. Yeah, and there's fortunately for Cloud9, no grenades picked up on the short area. So, Shazam and Stanislaw, they only need a single tap on these players, really. Just a little tap, but they're going to save. They've got two rifles in the bag, went for some early aggression, didn't find an early frag, they don't have a kit, so they're going to cut their losses and depart. And so shall Cloud9 to a safer place. We shall depart to greener, to greener lands then. Let us go home and drink tea. Or coffee, spe uh, preferably. No, I will have tea. You can get tea with caffeine in it. I um, require copious amounts of you caffeine. Can just, just, just put, just put five, five bags in there. Five bags of tea. You are disgusting. Remove the bags, just put the tea in there. Let it float around, James. Let it marinate. Remove the bags, put the tea in there. The tea's in the bags then. Just remove the tea from the bags. God, let's not, let's okay, not. just stop. Let's, let's just continue here. We These have ideas of yours are questionable <laughs> at best. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> I, admit, I admit that. All right, we've got Cloud9 with the AWP on Skadoodle. So things uh, uh, surely look uh, worse and worse for Tempo Storm, having to be up against Skadoodle's AWP. And they don't have an AWP of their own. So the amount of angles and uh, opportunities that Skadoodle can actually get with this are, are quite huge. He can push for a pick towards B. If it's not smoked off, he can push into even into mid, actually. If he's got the support, he can try to get a quick snap on a player who's moving into CT or even up towards the window of uh, B. He can go long. He can go catwalk for the openings. There is no shortage on Dust2 of how you can use an AWPA. And this is what they're going to use, or try to abuse, actually, um, I would think. But 3 Kozoi, the entry fragger, he's going to be potentially the first man in. And uh, in fact, no, he's going to flash out for uh, nothing. He looks to go for the drop into ca uh, into CT potentially. Uh, okay, he didn't get he didn't get down there actually. The flash, but oh, they clean up here on mid. This is pretty significant. Skadoodle's out there trying to get <laughs> trying to get out of dodge, but he gets blocked qu for quite a long time there. Will eventually make it out, but uh, that's a bit of a disaster there for Cloud9. They lose uh, a couple players. Yeah, and the flank is coming in, and the spot has been made by Shazam. We'll see if the CTs can adjust nothing, trying to stop the flank, but he will get stopped. Sean Grill's going to take down Stanislaw. Two versus three. Shazam with all of five HP coming in from the tunnel. And those two players need to make sure they don't, they don't line up. You see Sean trying to even the odds there, but he will lose, and they will be not stacked in the favor of Skadoodle. Wow. Or will be picked up on this occasion. Definitely hasn't been blasted into the sun this time. Will jettison into the sea. Mm. So that was an uh, interesting spot there because we saw we saw them trying to go for the picks on uh, on middle, but it, Ooh, it, went, mine? it went pretty wrong, yeah. But it went pretty wrong for them. They lost two players to that setup from Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm didn't even have anybody in CT either, so they, they were just playing with the the kind of B guys there really, and so they didn't have to even look at two angles. 
So Tempo Storm with a nice result there. However, ooh, that's a good kill onto Skadoodle already at the start of the round. That's a, one of those kind of gambly plays. You go in for the mid for the Angel. And this time Shazam is actually going to beat out Skadoodle too. So big edge found with Shaw's, uh, Sean Gares. Sean Gares, I'm struggling to speak. This is getting difficult, James. Sean Gares will pick up the AWP instead. Gorn shares. Gorn shares. <laughs> Best joke of the day. Mid has been abandoned. So this is a sight smoke, which will allow an easy approach. But it's crossover that could prove problematic if the AWPA decides to go towards the crossover angle. It's going to draw a B and CT here, looking to maybe go towards Cat. Was running back for a little bit, but uh, you take a turn. going to be coming in shortly. It's nothing with a quick pop onto Shazam. And that bombsite will not be held. Cloud9 with a nice advantage now. Okay, Shroud's getting taken out by the Insta trade coming in from nothing. That Molotov's going to force the issue, but the bullet's going to come even faster than that. So, Tempo Storm in control of Long, taking down everyone, leaving Sean Gares the only one standing. He's got a smoke to contend with as well, which means he's, he's going to have to expose himself to multiple assailants here. But is there a defuse coming out? I don't think there is yet. Hades finally gets to frag. But is there going to be a defuse here from the CTs? Just in time, indeed, there is. Glorins will prove glorious and take the round for Tempo Storm. And the question is, it's only a matter of time. But when? When will the auto sniper adorn the hands of Glorins? Maybe later, as first. They must build economy and build rounds and catch up. It might be possible that we just it was just a kind of a trolley decision that he t took before. I don't know if it's something legit that he's just really good at, at uh, using, but uh, we'll see the the uh, fairly standard grenades here just to take long a little bit easier. That is a very aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> that's really, really aggressive indeed. I'm not sure even what the point of it is. As a I guess they're trying to slow down a, a fast play up short, potentially. Yeah. Allow the teammates to get firmly in control, get their feet under the table, get their legs crossed and kick off the slippers and the socks. And whatever else they do. Dorito is probably in there somewhere. Oh, what? Does it, can he actually what see? What is that angle from Skadongla? Oh, there it is. He does get the shot. Was he? He was on the boost as well. Great stuff from Cloud9 finding the pick. Now the nade goes in. You can see they were trying to delay the use of the smokes and uh, abused heavily there by Skadoodle. Lovely stuff there. Use it on nothing said. And there's a second entry for Cloud9. Hades will find himself at the mercy of the AK-47 and nothing. And it's going to be a pretty clean round so far. There's pretty much nothing that Tempo Storm can do from this position. They are going to have to make the save happen. But will Cloud9 allow them? Will they allow them to keep these weapons alive? Oh, it looks like Shazam actually just with the shot there. I think... Uh, the angle was challenged, but the shot was not connected. And Cloud9 looking to remove these guns. And they're on quite the terror at the moment with these t some of these T rounds. Yeah, this will reset the loss bonus for Tempo Storm as well. So these will be crucial, no, critical saves for the Tempo Storm side. Again, I really feel like Cloud9 have the momentum in their favor from the previous map. And it's going to be an uphill struggle on a muddy slope for Tempo Storm in this game. Okay, so we have a 5-2 scoreline for Cloud9 as they assert themselves pretty effectively so far onto the map. You can see the skill coming out. You can see Skadoodle back on the AWP. We get the challenge here from Shazam. Looks like uh, he's going to go for that, but the smoke is going to make life a little bit difficult. I think we just saw the flash Flash over there and then potentially a peek, but the smoke does make things hard. Oh, Shazam goes in, gets the sh shot onto Shroud, but they're going to go in fast off the back of that entry frag. It's going to be really good here for Sean Gares. Picks up the second entry, and once again, Cloud9 find themselves in to be fairly quickly. The smokes go down, and the bomb should as well, as Hades must wait for his teammates before going for the retake. Yeah, and this is uh, not looking good for Tempo Storm. Cloud9 definitely running mo running them over with monster truck. Maybe a bit too aggressive yeah. there from nothing. Just going through the smoke maybe. But I think he's expecting Tempest Storm to have already been on their way to a, st a save. But they are steadfastly standing outside the wall. In fact, going for it. And um, those two yeah. frags will go the way of Cloud9. I had I I'm still surprised about it, in T-spawn waiting for the... Uh, the rotation away from the site from Tempo Storm. So I think Cloud9 have just expected, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to go for this. They're going to be uh, running away, so let's begin the hunt. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's going to be 6-2. to two. And 
Skadoodle still on the AWP here, looking for the cross shot, but they are going to smoke and then boost up Cat for a fast aggression with three players, in fact. And we'll have to see how this turns out because they've got a few P250s as well and nothing's going to run into this. Good luck, nothing. He's going to actually tap down one. He's going to spot this as well, so he's going to be able to call the tap, uh, the cap play and he's going to take down three players. That's a really good result for nothing and Skadoodle, who is helping out a little bit. There we go, last player cleaned up by nothing. They actually, surprisingly, didn't get much damage onto him, but he was tapping them a lot, so the aim punch was probably ruining their ability to come close to you know, actually hitting him. So, 7-2 to two now, Cloud9 running away with this, and Tempo Storm suffering on economy for the entire half so far. Yeah, so Cloud9 being dominant at the moment, the economy for the CT side is not really existent at the moment. And I think he's going to push out long on his own here and find the first frag. Put himself 1v1 using the smoke and he's going to find the second one as well. So nothing definitely in his element for this uh, match. Glorian gave his teammate the jump on uh, where nothing was going and that will allow him to find him some frags. Taking back control all for a split second our Tempo Storm but two versus two now. Both players of both teams spread out. Yep. Skadoodle in a position to cut the numbers of the CTs in half, but will he hold the angle long enough? Indeed he will. There goes Glorins. Only Hades now to try and clutch it for his team. And I'm not even sure if the bomb has been spotted. It is Skadoodle carrying it, but it's no longer relevant as Shroud will finish off the final player Hades. And that is uh, the five round lead being moved into a six round in that, lead. In, in that round at the start, Shroud only had one frag actually. After 10 rounds have been played and they were... Uh, sorry, after yeah, 10 rounds have been played. He only had, and of course, you know, so dominant from Cloud9. So quite interesting that Frashad wasn't actually finding much in the way of frags, but nothing's been aggressively moving into a lot of the picking opportunities. And he's been where the action is at the start of the majority of the rounds. So, and nothing's been, uh, you know, winning those fights for them. So, gonna have the aggression into Upper Dark, the aggressive cap play as well. So, Tempo Storm looking to get aggressive with all the pistols all over the place, all the time. And Rich will pick himself up a gun that he will not be uh, able to use. Not allowed to use that AK-47. So we're going to put the bullet in with the AWP and in comes the push onto the side looking for that plant and that's what they're going to get. Yeah, Cloud9 seems to be making all the right decisions here versus the CTs. The CTs push B, T's push A. The CTs push A, the T's push B. <laughs> and uh, Tempest Storm just being crushed here. They seem to be being read like a book. It's like there's a carrier pigeon with all their tactics being shot out of the sky. And, and uh, there are loads of pictures in this book as well, don't forget. What are those books called where they, they, they're kind of like 3D, you like open the pages? I'm not sure what those, those are called. 3D book? I, I don't know that <laughs> they're no called idea. that. I um, have no idea. Those books were cool though, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah. Back in the when day. I was, when I was three. Back in the day when I was three. Wow. <laughs> um, hey okay. Dan, here's this book, go away. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, we have Cloud9 nine, 9 to 2 now, so looking pretty hot on the T side. Tempo Storm looking for a result. Rick's actually picking up the AWP. He's on an angle that you don't commonly see AWPers actually. You more would see them towards the crossover that you would have a player kind of being like baiting uh, or being baited for on Goose. That's what you would normally see. But we're seeing the AWP here on that player. And if the smoke goes down into the site, he, I think he'll still have an angle here. So. Let's have a look. He's going to see the players. There's a shot on, from Rix. And again, great angle. They would not expect the orb to be. There's a second orb on crossover from Shazam. He's going to get a second snap as well. Great stuff there. And nothing will respond. He's been hot in this match. And it's a 2 on 4. You cannot count Cloud9 out just yet. Drop into CT will be dealt very effectively with by Hades, leaving only Mr. In game leader. And it's going to be Sean Gares. And Stanislaw has his number. And he's going to take him out. So 9 to 3. What's the score? What a change. Double orps on the A site. Not every day you see that, but we're yeah. seeing it today. It's proved successful, but will the CTs repeat the same setup or will they try and move them around the map as you often see? Seems like Shazam is headed away from the A site. Indeed, he's going to be looking towards mid. Oh, it's a double peak mid, in fact. So looking for the trades. They're going to see a play to the right. Try and go for the player in the middle. Freakazoid going to get tagged down, but he's still alive. We know what his aim is like. It's, it's actually kind of nuts because they're going for the big gambles now. Um, with, with the, I mean, these are big economy um, expenditures. Two ops are really huge economy expenditures. This can basically destroy you, your economy, and shut you out of the match if it doesn't go well in a position like this. And they're taking big gambles with it. And again, if you're in a spot where like 
you think this team is way better than you on this map, it can be smart to do that you, you, because you can you, it can give a big reward. It's it can go either way though. We're gonna see Cloud9 taking middle with the smokes. They know that they're up against double orb now, so their play is going to likely reflect this as they try to shut down angles with gren good grenade usage. Now we might get an entry attempt here with a pop flash, just to close out the close angles. Also the CT smoke from Cloud9. So Tempo Storm beginning to feel the pressure of a push, but not 100% sure where it's going just yet, but I think they're about to realize, and indeed, here comes the B-play. Yeah, Stanislaw got tagged through the door as well, but he's holding the window well. But uh, Rix has just got to jump up and get slam dunk. Shaka O'Neill coming in with a gun, taking him out there. Three versus three. Shroud just lurking, punishing the players from coming through the smoke. See the remaining Tempo Storm guys will be looking for, through the smoke towards B. And they will find themselves safe passage as Shroud has rotated into the site from the tunnels. So Shazam and Glorin to try and take this back for their team. Skadoodle just going to stand in the flames and he's still on fire and he will be down 16. Finished off finally by Shazam. Two versus two now. And the retake might be on here. In fact, Shroud has got 30 HP. It's 1v1. He's trying to fake it. He's a non-believer. Yeah, the gamble is real and it's going to pay off. Oh, Glorin's trying to get out there with the uh, the gun. He knows he's not got time. Well played by Shroud. He read the, the fake or he gambled on it. And indeed, he was correct. It's in that position, when you're Glorin's, you have to be so brave to actually hold that. You have to be so brave. It's it's pretty much a, it can be a 50-50. You, you just don't know. Um, but uh, again, the thing is, is that we, we saw that the round that Cloud9 lost to the double orb, it was like the right round for them to lose. If Cloud9 were going to lose a round, that, that obviously gives them this position now where Tempo Storm had to buy everything. The bonus has been reset. And if they don't come out with a win here, it's, it is uh, going to be 12-3. For Cloud9, most likely. Skadoodle gets traded, but he has an army of Cloud9 players coming to back him up. And again, this is what I'm talking about. Freakazoid, nothing. Shroud being let loose on a map like Dust2 is severely dangerous for the opposing force. Freakazoid going to get past the angle of the flash as well. And Tempo Storm have been wiped out by a Cloud9 tsunami. Oh yeah, it's, it's looking really good for them at the moment, and especially after that Inferno. Again, I, I don't know, I mean, it is a new lineup, but they ha have had, of course, a lot of tricky Inferno g games in the past. It's It has plagued them, and we saw that there, there was a lot of uh, uncertainty. Nobody in the likes map. the plague. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan, personally. Either way, they could very well have been shut out of this 2-0, but at the moment they're looking good. We've got the Deeks, we had the Deeks, Quad Deeks. Quad Deegs. Not every day that you see four Deagles coming out in the last round of the first half here. Tempo Storm with three thing three fingers worth of rounds here. Cloud9 have uh, 11 fingers, Dan. <laughs> uh, they're an abomination. An abomination. They are an anomaly. I wouldn't go as far as saying abomination. You're a cruel man, Dan. Someone's going to be cruel in this life, James. It's probably going to be dazed. You're the next Luger of Fingers fan. So to see if these Deagles can get any work done, Shazam's going to be the first to open things up. But the A slope is very much closed. The crossfire from the uh, Cloud9 players. We've got a jumping peak there from the CT. See what's going on. They've got a spot of play, Goose, but really, how much can they get done here? There's still one more flash on the Cloud9 players as well. Shroud coming in for a frag. And uh, Shazam going down as well. Headshots everywhere. Oh, Come and collect nice. your headshots. Shroud is dishing them out one by one. Collect your ticket. Now serving number five on Tempo Storm. Yeah, it's a really nice half there from Cloud9. They pretty much wrecked Tempo Storm. There was not much of a response. And you can see that uh, it, it took kind of gimmicky play from Tempo Storm to be able to take some of the rounds that they took. We had the double up defense from Goose and Crossover. Goose. In <laughs> from the Goose. From the Goose and uh, Elite Crew or Graffiti. Well, Cloud9, you have to expect that they're going to be feeling really good right now because as they go onto their CT side, uh, there is no pressure at this point. They just have to play a strong game and they don't have to worry about we, don't ha we only have one shot, Look one at opportunity. This. Look at this, Dan. Firstly, nothing, top fragging there. He's got more than double his uh, deaths. And nothing, Freakazoid and Shroud. The boys, the aim stars, have been unleashed on the populace, Dan. They've been unleashed on the populace. It's like 
they've just opened the cage and then took the chains off and they've just gone running out rabid, just like frothing at the mouth. They've just gone bananas on Dust 2. But it's not over yet. Tempo Storm have the freedom of the T side to, to contend with. But really, you have to favor Cloud9. And uh, this is actually becoming a very common pistol, is that you have cap presence, because you get so fast uh, rotates onto B. Well, let's see if they can hold this rush, because there are five people coming down. Tempo Storm moving very quickly indeed. We have the uh, counter flashes coming in from the CT side, but there are no frags yet. As I say that, here they come. Two headshots of Cloud9 so far, and Skadoodle is stuck in what Dan likes to call Gandalf, but he's got teammates coming in to su for support, and he will end up being bait there. We'll see if uh, Shazam can get the plant down. Yeah, that was a, a really big deal that the plant being stuck for so long. But the CTs clown and they were waiting. Skadoodle's just chilling there. And it's the Swedes that call it Gandalf. I don't, uh, it's weird, but they, that's what they do. But Stanislaw will deflect Skadoodle from that position as they all charge in over Catwalk. Frags being found here. Bit the Glocks. Hades with a double on the delivery there. Great stuff. And that should secure this because Sean Gess only has 11 HP. And indeed, Hades will finish off the job with the triple. And Tempo Storm will win the pistol, but again, Cloud9, they can get three scouts if they want. I would love to... Three scouts is very, very good in a situation like this, actually. One. Two, two, two is, is two. Uh, really good. They don't have to get a third one, but like two is really good. Three. Oh, there we go. Yes. Awesome. The scouts are so dangerous. Tempo Storm basically have to rush. Uh, Cloud9 also have to recognize if they get counter strated here, which is basically a B rush, and not throw away all the scouts, bring them into the next round. And they're going to be a close here, going to be going for it. Oh, nothing's position is absolutely massive. Gets three kills with the 5 7, and in goes the remaining players for Cloud9 with the two scouts, and they are both tagged right now. Glorians and Hades will both die to one tag of a scout if they manage to get a torso shot. So Cloud9 in this one. Oh, this is so dangerous, and he's going to spot the head Glorians. Good job. Just Freakazoid left now, the entry fragger with a scout and no armor. Good luck, have fun. He is going to opt to run away as he is in an impossible situation. No useful guns outside the B bomb site, so they will take their damage and he yeah. will rotate to try and find some exits. Three kills is good, and, and with the frags that nothing got, he got three kills there, so that's $900 in addition to uh, the loss bonus. He's going to be able to reinvest in something. Now it could be, you know, it could be just a, a P250, or he could go for, you know, a 5.7 again. So it, it actually enables him to keep the pressure up. So pretty nice that it's all on the, uh, all on one player. Now we'll have to see whether or not Freakazoid is going to handle this or hand this uh, to Skadoodle. He really should, because I hear Skadoodle's good at sniper rifles, James. So he may well be. But apparently he's not deserving of the of the scout. Because they're going to go with it. He has the best spawn here to long, but he won't get a timing as they're going to go for the same play. In to B. No messing around. Keep it simple. Don't have to deal with too many angles. And there will be no nothing hiding a car with a triple on the 5-7 this time. Okay, so Splash is coming in and they're going to try and punish the Planter. Indeed, they will. Picks up a weapon for all of a split second. He will fall, but it's always... I love that push when they the plant goes down and they just charge through the doors. Can net you a lot of kills. <laughs> Stroud picking up a second uh, frag as well. That was actually hilarious from nothing. He just, it just runs in. Just runs in and gets the kill. That's actually good damage. They got two kills there. And combined with the three previous on the previous round, th that is damage that, again, keeps Tempo Storm actually within an eco in, uh, if, if damage is to be good here from Cloud9. So Cloud9 with a full M4 setup. A limited number of grenades. We can see them skipping on head armor, which is smart. As, the P uh, well, the P90 is out there. Oh, and the Galil's still out the as well. Death by Kitty. The Doom Cannon so, but, is out. But they, the thing is, is that they wanted to have M4s instead of FAMASs. So that's the gamble. That's the trade trade-off. And we'll have to see if it's going to punish them. It's, it is a bit of a gamble, but we'll have to, we'll have to see. It's Rix time is tell. leading the charge. I am counting the seconds before a headshot comes in from that P90. There's a failed grenade. We get a crossfire here, but it's going to be the AK from Glorians that takes down the Shroud. And well, this could get risky now. Their positioning is terrible. They've lost two men already have Cloud9. Three Kazoid in with the kill onto Stanislaw, but he's got to back away. He's alone out there. He's alone in the dark. And uh, they will be making the bomb plant happen very soon. So well played by Stempo with this. Again, another simple round. And it's uh, paying off for them. Okay, so Shazam going to find the frag there just in time to stop the flank. But Three Kazoid is still in play, and Shazam's quite heavily dinked. And wow. he, Freakazoid is just killing everyone at the moment. And the again, bullets. 
Shazam. If he goes for a wide peek here, ah, oh, he's reloading in the wrong place, and Hades will finish things off. So we're not going to see the P90 after all, Dan. I was being teased. I was ready. I was holding onto the table, Dan, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, that that was kind of awesome there from Freakazoid. He he only had seven bullets left in total. It would have been quite cool to see what he could have done in that spot, because um, it would have had to have been some taps. Gonna have the uh, the tag on the cross. Sean Gare's gonna take one to the shoulder through the doors. Gonna want to get some antiseptic on that as we have Cloud9 ready to rotate. And again, you know, this is one of those spots where do Cloud9 actually, should they have stacked it into B or stacked it into A long? Because these are the two spots there where Tempo play their anti ecos, it would seem. Yeah, that's a very nice flash by the CTs there, just bouncing it off the wall. So it flashes the people holding the cross who are on the uh, the pit side of long, which will net one frag. And it'll be Freaker's way to try and aim his way to the destruction of the T's, but Rix has other ideas. So, Tempo Storm closed the gap to four rounds here, but uh, we're going to see the buy coming out for Cloud9 now, so the real game will begin. Yeah, they, they have to uh, begin to be a little bit careful because we can see, of course, five in a row there. So, Tempo Storm starting to put the hurt on just as Cloud9 Dish the damage out on their on their T side as well. So, Orpon Skadoodle, I think this is the first time we we've really we really see like a, an Orpon Skadoodle with a proper CT investment across his teammates as well. And we've got the normal two three setup. Usually you would expect Skadoodle to stay on cross here and the the site player to abandon long in this spot and go towards CT spawn just to be safe against the really fast B split play, which is incredibly dangerous at the moment in the current meta. We see that that be the most problematic to hold. But they are going to be gambling a little bit towards A. Uh, no, no play into into CT spawn, so a little bit blind here as to what's going on. No one down for either side yet. Just lots of questions being asked through the smoke there. A bit of team tagging, but nothing, not the end of the world really. So. We've got Skadoodle with, I don't even know what kind of angle there is. Information play through the box. I'm sure he's not going to kill anybody can, from you there. You can. You, you can, can absolutely, yeah. Wow. You can definitely do that. Well, we'll it's, see. If it's a similar it one in Mirage, actually, by short. Look at this. Looking for it. Oh, he's actually just going to use it for the info, the peak. But he doesn't get the shot. Stanislaw kills him straight away. Oh, no, this is actually a disaster. Lost the Orpa for no damage. Cloud9 are in a very bad spot right now. It's even a short plant coming in, and there's nothing they can do about that. They have to retake into short or make some crazy stuff happen along with a good distraction. But Tempo Storm, are they looking the right ways? So far, they are. And we are going to see Cloud9 go back for the save. And this is definitely a good decision because they can actually force up on the next round due to the uh, the round loss bonus. They'll have the max now, which will be $3,400. I'm not sure what they're left with on the players who died. Let's have a quick look see what Skadoodle and Nothing have. So they, okay, well, they're, they're going to have 3500 and 3450 But still, they can get famous uh, Kevlar with, with some nades out with that. So that's, that's actually fine as far as the buy goes. But James, this is really worrying right now because... The money on Tempo Storm means that they're not going to eco anytime soon. Cloud9 have to legit start winning these buy rounds. They want to win this game. Indeed, they do. The lead. Cut to three rounds now. See, Sean Gareth's going to skimp on the helmet, but it won't matter on this particular round as he's up, up against four AKs and the AWP. So many flashes coming out. I don't think Stanislaw would have seen that CT, but look how heavily tagged they are as well. He's just, just going to have to poke them once with the gun. And that's going to be two very fast frags indeed. Groin's doing nice work there with the assist. Pop flash coming up from Cloud9, but again, they've been completely wrecked. Skadoodle on less than 10 HP as well. And the entire Tempo Storm team is on long and A. What are the options here for Cloud9? They're in another situation where they have to retreat, and yeah. retreat they will. Yeah, there's, there is no retaking, especially with Skadoodle on 9 HP, and almost no nades, and no positioning, and no and five people alive, and an author alive as well, and a plant specifically designed to abuse with the orb. Yeah, there's, there's no retaking this, but it's the same situation as before. They'll have the same bonus. Again, we can do a quick tab just before the, the push comes in. And so Shroud is going to have just ar around 6k, and we're going to have 3500 for the other players. So they'll have another buy-in. But What a snap oh. from Hades. And the trade comes in from Glorins. But they should have, they should be around 5k. I didn't see their money, but they were the ones that saved previously. So, okay, they're a little bit poorer than that. I guess they, they got some incendiaries, which really hurts. Really expensive. 
So, AWP out for Skadoodle, and previously we saw him AWPing from the bomb site instead of much... Um, you can you can AWP more safely from the kind of the card position and just taking... If you can keep control of long, you can have safer and safer peaks as you close the gap into more of a long and then you retreat to long. But we have a big B push coming in. The P90's out, James. Oh, Rex, death by Kitty. I think he's heard you. And again, they're getting fast entries. Where is the response from Cloud9? They're getting completely destroyed. Whenever we see a fast round Look from Tempo. Look at the flank from Stanislaw, oh sorry, from Shazam. He is in suicide, waiting for the rotation. And Cloud9 shut down for another consecutive round. This time only two players making a run for it. And again, they're still being chased by Shazam. Freakazoid could get a jump on him if he goes for the PK from Blue. And indeed he will, Shazam unable to do anything about that. And uh, that's going to give them the option to pick up a second orb. So... We'll see if a Tempo Storm can't get these orbs off the remaining two players. Then uh, who knows how they can put them into play in the following round. So there's one. Just good to try and save here. He's going to find one frag and he will get traded as well. So nothing saved here for Cloud9. Yeah, I, th I, I wonder if, if... I mean, some of these rounds I think partly have been a setup problem for Cloud9. The way that they've actually set up their defense. Um, but generally speaking, Tempo Storm are running so hot at the moment. They're hitting all their shots. Their entries are so flawless. They have. They would look like they got shot out of the game. Cloud9 were probably on Cloud9. There I say it. And Shazam's going to pick up an entry right at the start. And they were already running into B. This is. This should be over already on this round. Of course, the P250s were all to show for for Cloud9. But Tempo Storm about to tie up this game, 12 to 12, in the final map in this quarterfinal here for the HGC Reborn Invitational. And. This is a situation that Cloud9 are going to be reeling from because they haven't found an answer. They haven't. Where can they find confidence or consistency on their CT side? Have they won a single round on CT yet? It feels like they haven't. I know they haven't. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Sean, Sean Gears and nothing got tagged through B doors. So, but through mid doors, just by Shazam, killed the first one, tagged the second one. That's some nice damage there by Cloud9. Maybe they could save themselves a weapon. But the engagement from the T's will continue. The spray down not going to be favorable there. And uh, that could be two AK saves. Shrag on a fourth. So I just could do all for now. And they've done some... Da what? Wow. What? How did he did die? Did not though? have enough did To the life. bomb? Yeah. Oh my god. No way. He, didn't he have like 34 health? He thought he was good. He was not good. Oh wow. 12 to 12 now. Tempo Storm have evened things up. And uh, maybe I wrote them off earlier. But they are proving me wrong at the moment. Let's see if they can change their fate. Double up is actually really, really good. Actually, the weakness is is fast executes with the proper smokes, like the the mid to B and also the the th the triple water, the water smoke on A is really strong. But, oh, look at that snap from Shabam! He's starting to hit his shots now. There's, there's a, again a tempo are running pretty hot here, and even though he gets traded, they actually they get one for two there. That's really good. They need to get another kill here, and they also need to take long away from the CTs. Will there be a back off here from? From uh, Skadoodle, is he just going to stick around? Or is, yeah, I think he's going to just fall back now with the AWP. That's smart. He was trying to cover his, his retreat, and he will successfully make it back. But we have two orps alive, and an M4 or nothing versus the three AKs. Tempo Storm have a lot more ability to work with pace, but uh, they are lacking grenades, smokes specifically, to deal with the orps. Right, so Tempo Storm, a man down. Stanislaw being taken out by nothing there. Jumping shot wow. through the rail from Skadoodle. And that is the absurd kind of frag that can keep Cloud9 in the game. Outrageous frags there by Skadoodle. Yeah, Hades is looking for the shot. He's given his uh, position away. He's going to run into the play. He was flanking. Sean Guess had to switch to the pistol. Caught with a, caught with the switches there. And looks like we're going to have the, uh, the no steam log on there. So a little bit of a pause uh, to commence. But what, what can you even say about that? Like that could not have come at any better of time. Yeah. Jumping AWP yeah. through the corner of the structure there to make it even worse. To just <laughs> to just crush them. <laughs> to, to make it even more filthy. Yeah. But it's uh Hey, I mean, you, you cannot count out Tempo Storm at the moment. They, again, as you, you made the horrendous pun earlier, they've been proving true to their name in a lot of these rounds. The fast pushes have been working well for them. We can see that they executed it there on long. No matter where they've put it in, whether it's B, the B push, or the A long, when they put those those fast plays in, they have been getting, they've been hitting the entries, actually. Most of the time, they've been trading properly, 
and that's allowed them to get the positioning. But if it's if this like positioning onto the bomb site, well, that's what you want as a terrorist side. You're going to lose two or three players to do that. You can get a two versus three, or sometimes a two versus four. The bomb down post plant. That's that's a pretty good situation potentially. Even if you're down on the numbers, you can play that well with nades. So. Double Op is very strong on this map. We'll see another fast play into B, looking to try to get it done here. And it's Sean Gares to shut it down. Gets the double for the triple in total. And he finally gets traded on by Rix. Oh, a great shot over the top onto nothing as well. And Rix might just save things here for Tempo Storm. But Shazam, his last standing comrade, is going to get taken out. He's got to do it all alone. He's got to get the ace. He's going to look for the peak. He needs that quick frag. It won't happen. Cloud9 with 14. Tempo Storm with 12. Are Cloud9 back in this? Well, there's still more buys to come from Tempo Storm. Indeed, this back and forth is absolutely absurd, and it is resting on our knife edge. Aura jumping AWP, jumping AWP short, whatever you prefer. We will have to see nothing going huge at the moment. Heading towards a 30 bomber. I don't know if there'll be enough rounds left for him to find it. We'll yeah. have to wait and see. Shazam getting another tag through the door there. This time it's going to be Sean Gares to take considerable damage. 81 done to him. This setup is much better, and it especially has, uh, of course, previously, with Sean Gares rushing to B and having the open A, they know that the fast, super fast plays from Tempo Storm have been a almost a, a crutch, actually, for them to try to exploit as they either go fast long or, or B. And that has they, they've been getting the entries. Having the AWP there is, of course, so powerful. It's the right place, the right time. Well read by Sean Gares. And now we're going to get the long take again from Tempo Storm. A little bit of a delay, and that's going to allow them to find basically one player they can isolate him with smoke and then go for skadoodle but he's gonna hit the shot shroud or not smoked off at all actually and he's gonna get a couple of kills this is looking much better but shazam oh he, i thought he was on there for that shot but just done his law remaining gets a nice tap there onto freakazoid gets cast aside and it's gonna be uh freakazoid sorry uh stanislaw against the world four players to find now 40 seconds to do it and the bomb is uh, in the, in almost in the longhouse, so good luck. Flank coming in from short as well as CT and uh, a bit of poking there. Follow up from nothing. Match point to Cloud9. So Tempestorm had it all in their hands, but it's been swept away with the rain. Indeed. We'll have to see whether Tempestorm will go for those pushes again. They because now they've got the pistols and they've got lots of grenades. So. Again, there is a lot you can do this with the meta and also the setup that Cloud9 have consistently been showing Tempo Storm. A really effective round with these nades is the a wall of smokes A, and Catwalk's always for free. So if they smoke Xbox, they get to Catwalk, they can go for that execute. And that allows them to get close with the tech lines before getting fragged as the smokes are down to cover the approach. But I fear they're going for the, the execute, and this is very high risk here because you can see Sean Gares, he's itching. He's itching to spray down the entire lineup. That might be exactly what happens, or they can just they can solve this, James, with a single smoke. A single investment of 300 bucks each, and they're able to slow this down. And uh, Tempo Storm so far. Looks like they are not deterred here. They're going to go in, throw the smoke forward. Sean Gares knows exactly what that forward smoke means. He's going to spray through to immense damage as nothing comes in for the finishing blows. And that's going to be at 16-12. Cloud9 will save themselves. And they, they're going to be breathing a huge sigh of relief right now and be like, guys, that almost it. happened. Yeah. That almost happened. That should not have happened, but it almost did. So hopefully that, that could be like one of those wake-up call matches where like, okay, we're still in it, but we need, they need to step it up. Yeah, that was an interesting series, and those last two maps really could have gone in either direction there. Yep. Tempo Storm unlucky not to come out victorious there. I think if they, uh, you know, just a few, a few less mistakes and yeah. they take that 2-0 or 2-1. Or definitely, and, and of course, uh, yeah, definitely well played to Tempo Storm. They... They're the up-and-coming team. They're the team that's developing. Of course, they don't have all the household names as, uh, as Cloud9 do. That's why the expectations fall high, uh, of course, to Cloud9. Why we saw 93% of people put, you know, hedge their bets on them. I think 93% of people were very close to having heart attacks then. Yeah, I, th I think so as well. Um, I think, actually, we should check our alphadraft.com picks and see, so, see how we're doing, James. Because last time we checked, I think we, were, we went into the middle of the pack out of 3,000 people. So I don't, I don't know... I'm not sure if we're uh, if we're deserving of uh, of a good result anymore. We were about 1,111th last time we checked. We'll oh really? See. Yeah, let's, we'll let's see if it has gone up or down. Oh dear! Wow! Oh dear! Because I would imagine a lot of people would actually have Cloud9 as their team, and I think that's where where a lot of points were lost because they lost so many rounds um, against Tempo Storm. 
So wow, the chicken's nowhere to be seen now, but we've got tri triple duck in fifth place. Nice. So we've lost a chicken and gained a duck. Excellent. I prefer ducks. All right, so this, of course, is, uh, is the Fantasy League, guys. And uh, you, can, you can play this too, alphadraft.com. Go check it out. Get the Fantasy League on the go. And, guys, we'll take a very quick break whilst we set up the next match. It's going to be uh, Keed Stars versus Affinity, which is actually a remax, rematch. I'm not sure if it's really a grudge match, but I feel like it should be because uh, Keed Stars, uh, a lot of people wanted to see them in the Face It League. They got knocked out by Affinity in the qualifiers in the best zero, of three. wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. So yeah. Keith Stars are going to be probably would have looked at those demos, so they should be ready for this rematch, and I'm sure they're going to be pumped to take it to Affinity in this one. So stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss it here for the HCC Reborn Invitational. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 